This video is going to be a real quick unboxing and review of the USB, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi adapter. In order to test out this product, I will do a quick demonstration on how to use your phone as modem. As you can tell, it has some information about the product on the front side. If we flip it over, it has a little bit more information. You can tell this was packaged to be hung on a hook, so I guess the packaging is pretty decent. There really isn't anything all that interesting about unboxing a USB Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth adapter. I do want to let people know that this particular product worked fantastic. It does have a driver and it does have instructions, but I want to let people know you don't have to install the driver. It'll work without it. It was just plug and play. Other people had mentioned that about this device as well. Here we get an interesting look, you know, at the actual product itself. It's really small. I was worried if it would be heavy or not, but it's super lightweight. You see a lot of these Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth adapters that don't have the antenna. I'm hoping the antenna will allow for a greater distance between networked devices. The antenna screws onto the adapter really super easy. I didn't quite have it as tight as it should have been, but with your fingers you can get it really super tight so it can swivel. The antenna has a couple different positions as well. It's a pretty decent product overall. I'm not going to wait until the end of the video to give this product two thumbs up. To see if this USB Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi adapter worked, I simply connected it to my computer by using my phone as modem. All you do is go down to settings, click it, the next screen will pop up, you'll hit network and internet, and then the next screen you're going to hit hotspot and tethering. On the next screen after that, you're going to have to select portable Wi-Fi hotspot, but the first time you're setting up the network, you're going to also have to select mobile hotspot settings. The screen after that, you'll select set up Wi-Fi hotspot. And then the very last screen, you're going to have to probably use your password, a security code, or your phone's PIN in order to use your phone as modem with an Apple computer or a Windows computer. On a Macintosh computer, you want to go to the system preferences. Then you want to go to where it says network. Then you want to click on Wi-Fi. We can see my phone is already selected, but there's a bunch of other stuff on there as well. We can simply turn it off by selecting turn Wi-Fi off. It's that simple. As you can tell, I already have mine set up. The first time you install your phone as modem, it will ask for a security code, a password, or maybe even the PIN number of your phone. On a Windows PC, we want to go to the control panel. Mine's on the taskbar. I have a large icon selected. I want to click on Network and Sharing Center. Then I want to click on Change Adapter Settings. We can see the PDA net. I'm not worried about that. I want to right click on Wi-Fi. I want to select Connect. Here we see my phone, my Motorola phone. If I click on here, now we can connect to the internet using my phone as modem. To show that we're using my phone as modem, I'll select Firefox. I'll go to YouTube really quick. I'll select this video. I can close this really quick. If we want to disconnect, we can take this icon, click on it, hit disconnect. That's all there really is to it. You can tell we're no longer connected. I also want to say when you're in Windows and you're trying to connect up to the internet, when it first finds your phone, it's probably going to want a security code, a password, or the PIN for your cell phone. With this product, I could use both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth with PDA net or with the built-in tethering software that comes with most Android phones. You can obviously tether your phone as modem using a USB cable as well. If we click on the CD-ROM, we can see that we do have a Bluetooth driver and a Wi-Fi driver. 
If we cl click on the Bluetooth, we can see Windows 7 and Windows 8, as well as Windows 10. Simply click on it, and you're looking for the .exe file. There it is right there if we want Windows 10 drivers installed. If you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, you just do the exact same thing. Find the .exe file. That's all there really is to it. Like I said, with my system, it just installed automatically. But in case you do need the drivers, it does come with the drivers on the CD-ROM, although you'd probably be better off going to the manufacturer's website to get the most updated driver. I decided to demonstrate using your phone as modem for the review of this product because I thought I could do two videos in one. I have friends that don't realize they can hook their laptop up to their Android phone by using the tethering process that's built into pretty much all Android phones at this point in time. So hopefully some of my viewers and subscribers learn more than just the fact that this particular product works, but hey, here's how you use your phone as modem. That's pretty much the end of this video. I think this product is a pretty cool product, especially for the price. So I have to give it two thumbs up. I will try to leave a link in the description box.